Good morning, my friends in Europe. Good afternoon in the East and uh, good evening even down there in New Zealand. My name is Oliver Krieter. I'm the product manager for Europe and I have the real pleasure today to introduce to you the new Model 40N, our new product uh, which uh, has been released to the press yesterday. So the PR went out, uh, the public got informed and I will give you today all the information you need to know on the Model 40, what makes it special and uh, what are the key features we build into this product. The agenda for today is uh, that I will bring you, give you a little recap on the modern music luxury. So that's the slogan we uh, yeah, br brought to market uh, one and a half year ago when we started to launch Model 30 and SACD 30N. Then I will go into details on the Model 40 and what uh, it can do, uh, which is the target group and what technology we use inside to make uh, it a real Marant product. In the end, uh, I will go to uh, give over to my colleague Robert. Uh, he is our marketing coordinator for Europe and he will give you some of the information on how this product uh, will be put on the market, how we are going to support you selling this nice uh, unit. Uh, in the end, as I already mentioned, we will have a question and answer round. And for that, I have my colleague Frederick with me. He is located in Hong Kong. And I really appreciate uh, that he's taking part on this nice uh, launch um, session here. Uh, at his place, we have now 4 p.m. I heard we already have some customers or audience from New Zealand as well, where we have 9 p.m. or 7 p.m. Uh, so it's, uh, no, actually it's 9 p.m., 7 p.m. in Australia. So as said, really appreciate your time and uh, let's get started now. The modern music luxury. So as said, uh, we, we started this one one and a half year ago. And uh, let me just recap uh, what it actually means. So modern, you often uh, link to modern design, modern appearance, modern look and feel. However, that's not um, the, the whole uh, story behind it because Modern for us also means uh, that we use modern components, modern parts, new parts which are getting available on the market to design our products internally, it means the circuitry. And we're also looking into modern technologies. If we talk about networking, for example, or HDMI. So modern has a much wider uh, meaning for us than just design. So the design, of course, is very important, especially on our new models. Then we have some musicality. Uh, I think that's self-explaining since our foundation in 1953. Uh, music and uh, music reproduction, musicality is into uh, written into our DNA and that's always we aim for to really transport the, um, the essential of music to the audience. And then we have the luxury, luxury part. Um, luxury always means something special something outstanding and that's what we always aim for if we design a new product. And luxury means also that um, the owner itself actually is proud of owning a product. He is something uh, owning which differentiates to the, to the mass market. So it's something special. So something he can identify with and something he also likes to pass on maybe to the next generation. So this is a modern musical luxury just uh, briefly explained. As said, um, back uh, one and a half year, we had the pleasure to launch a Model 30 and SACD 30N as the first product in the new modern music luxury uh, um, under this theme. And um, these products have been very well received by the market, means by the user, the end user, but also the dealer and the press. And uh, we have been very much overwhelmed with all the re reviews we got, the very good reviews and also the awards. So uh, a full success story, which actually motivated us to continue our path uh, going forward. And uh, the next model we are going to launch is the Model 40N. As you already can guess what the N means uh, or stands for, of course it's network. And we are moving into the next generation uh, with the Model 40N, adding network connectivity to the model, uh, to the integrated amplifier. But we're also going one step further here. 
uh, with the modern music luxury, we make it as simple as possible to uh, access because everything is already built into the amplifier. So with the network streaming that you actually only need to add a pair of speakers and you're ready to go. What was the motivation? Uh, where did we get the motivation from or took some uh, knowledge from? Uh, I put on the slide here three of the SKUs, uh, which have partly uh, some relation to the Model 40N, uh, which is a PM7000N, which was our first integrated amplifier supporting network streaming. So we have the HEOS built in network technology taken from the Model 7, uh, 7000N. We have the HDMI connectivity, which you of course find on all our AV products, but also on the stereo receiver, the NR1200. So we took HDMI and we have the luxury feel and design and uh, the, the quality of construction taken from the Model 30. All together just forms the Model 40N. So with the Model 40N, uh, we are going to actually address two different target customers. So first of all is the audiophile. Uh, so let's say our loyal customer base, uh, the, the customer or the, the user who really loves the, the performance of a product, who really goes into all the details of the music reproduction um, and really wants to have the, the best quality. However, in a very easy to access way and with the Model 40N having everything integrated, it's a very convenient uh, product to use. The second customer group we're also going to target where we want to widen our target audience is actually the indulger. So it's not the guy who is really into music yet, or let's say into the word of audiophile music reproduction, but he is the guy who's looking for always having the best uh, in-house. So uh, getting the best quality parts, he's not happy with just getting uh, the average components, but he always is looking to exceed the level of normal of standard. He just want to get one step further and have the best value um, um, for, for his money. And that's uh, where we want to widen our audience group, also addressing the indulger. So let's have a closer look to the design of the model uh, 40N. Uh, just to recap here, uh, what are our design philosophies and what uh, stands out on the uh, visual appearance of the product. If you look top right, you can see the portal display, uh, which is very iconic to, to the Marantz units. It's already started back uh, in the 1950s because the tube amplifiers at these days had uh, this portal display to adjust the bias of the tubes. And uh, we, over the years, always tried to maintain this portal display on our very special products. And uh, in the past, it was mainly done in the premium class. And uh, we also, of course, are very happy to integrate it on the Model 30, but as well also on the Model 40N. So it's really an iconic element, which already makes the product stand out uh, from the crowd. Then we have the symmetry. Uh, the overall design of the product is always in a very nice balance. Uh, if you put a line uh, vertically in the middle of the product, you can see that actually more or less the product design is mirrored from the left to the right. So it's all in harmony. And harmony is also something you can relate to warmth because uh, the way we design the product um, also should reflect uh, a bit the music characteristic Marantz is standing for. It's the warmth of music reproduction and the warmth uh, is also reflected by the design, by the overall uh, appearance of yeah, how the materials work together and the shoes and colors. So uh, it reflects a certain warmth. It's not hard edges. It's nicely curved, for example, the back shell, uh, which really gives us a nice touch and feel. And how do they look like uh, in total? You see it here. Uh, as uh, you know it from the former models, we also will have two colors again. Uh, you have the nice back shell with the centerpiece, uh, 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 illumination, uh, which really nicely yeah, lets stand out the front uh, panel with all the control knobs from the back shell with a nice pattern on it. So it's really nicely designed. And um, 
you can see the portal display and we also took this ring which you can see on the portal display and transferred it over to the remote control to really give it a one uh, one family appearance then it's getting more interesting now uh, we're going into the features so what can the product actually do for the customer what makes it unique why does it stand out and uh, why is it so simple to use uh, first of all of course the network capability as already mentioned the n in the product name stands for the network and we built in our heos uh, technology which is our gateway to the internet uh, or to the network um, it will give you access to all the music streaming services uh, in, in the cloud. But it also gives you access to the music which is stored on your NAS drive um, in your home network. And it will support up to 192.24 bit or 5.6 DSD. So all high res resolution audio formats are actually supported. Uh, in addition, you have the possibility to do Bluetooth and AirPlay just for the convenience. And you have the app to do the full control of the uh, amplifier via your smart device. Um, of course, voice is supported as well. We do Amazon uh, voice control, Siri, and also Google Assistant. Uh, of course, uh, availability of this feature depends a bit on the region itself. The product itself is room tested, uh, utilizing AirPlay for streaming or the integration of room. The second hot uh, feature on this product is HDMI connectivity. As I already mentioned, uh, we took this feature or we have a long experience with using HDMI on our AV products, but now it's the first time that we're actually going to introduce, implement HDMI to a HIFI product. And we do it that way that we uh, give it the not a full switcher into the product because we don't want to have all the stuff in there, our aim is just to get the audio signal, which is uh, coming from your TV, amplified and in our uh, um, product. So we will have an HDMI input supporting ARC. Today, TVs uh, are smart and they are getting more and more the source of content. So uh, with having YouTube, Netflix, uh, any kind of music streaming service available on your smart TV, it's nicely uh, usable now via the HDMI ARC audio return channel input on the Model 40N. And you can experience all your stuff in a much better quality. Uh, to make it even more convenient, we also support CEC. That means uh, if you're now browsing with your TV remote, you can also control the volume of the Model 40N. So that's very easy handling. Uh, let's have another look to the back panel of the product just to see all the connectivity and features uh, just starting from left to right. Of course, we also have USB input uh, where you connect your uh, USB hard drive and uh, can browse uh, via the Heos app very conveniently. Then you have, of course, HDMI and network connectivity, as already explained, uh, the LAN network uh, connection. But also, if you look top left, top right, you have the possibility to add antennas for the Wi-Fi integration or for Bluetooth slash AirPlay. And uh, going further, we have uh, in the second line, we have all the analog inputs, including a very nice, uh, uh, well, very nice stage behind the phono input uh, supporting MM. We have a power amp direct uh, uh, output or no, not output input. We actually can nicely integrate an AV system with your hi-fi uh, setup uh, we have a subwoofer output not to forget about that one which can be used to support uh, your speakers if you're going for smaller size uh, um, bookshelf speakers uh, you can add the subwoofer uh, here this one is also um, with, a, with a low pass filter so you have your crossover setting from 40 60 80 100 120 hertz you can utilize and of, uh, for, finally, we have the uh, high quality Maron speaker terminals to get your best connectivity to your speakers. So let's have a look to the build quality of the products. Um, so far, you only have seen yeah, full screenshots of the product. 
let's go a bit more into the details here. Um, as you can see, I put in here some arrows to uh, indicate what kind of materials are used. And you can see a lot of aluminium is in place. And uh, it's very thick aluminium to make the product really heavy. Uh, we have, in addition, uh, high quality um, feet installed on the product because that's uh, actually a good foundation. It's always needed for a good audio performance. Uh, you don't want to have any vibration. So a nice solid uh, uh, sit on, on your uh, rack is uh, always important. We have some nice illumination to highlight the pattern, which you can see on the back shell, uh, which really gives you gives the product a th nice three-dimensional effect when in operation. Uh, the remote itself has an aluminum top, so just also to transport here the nice touch and feel when you actually uh, operate the product by the remote. One inside shot uh, here, like uh, yeah, a little exploded view. On the left hand side, you can see the, uh, the power supply with a big, heavy toroidal transformer. Uh, then on, in the middle, it's a heat sink with a power amplifier uh, attached to it. On the right hand side, it's all the input stage uh, for all the digital, but also analog uh, uh, signal input and uh, the preamplifier stage. And uh, what you already can see here on the right hand side is a big shiny metallic box, uh, which actually is uh, holding all the digital part. So this one is perfectly sheeted so that no interference can uh, appear uh, on, um, on the audio signal. And also talking about interference, uh, we took a lot of care that we don't have any interference from the power supply towards the audio signal. Uh, if you check the layout here, the orange part is all the power supply, which is on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, as mentioned before, you have all the audio processing, be it for digital or analog, and the amplification state. And these two are completely separated by the heatsink, which is put in the middle. So by that, we have the maximum distance between these two sections. And that helps us to keep the audio signal as clean as possible. If we have a closer look to the silver box you have seen, uh, and can see again here on the uh, lower right picture, this is a shielded box which holds actually two boards. Uh, the top board is our HDMI board, which is also featuring all the other digital connectivity like optical, uh, and also like the, the coaxial and the HERS uh, uh, module. Then the second board on the lower layer is, uh, as you can see, again, separated by an extra metal shield uh, in between. And on the lower board, you have the DA converter section and the phono board, which again is separated by a sheeting bar and all put together in one extra cabinet. Actually, it's kind of like a product in a product because it's completely separated from the rest of the electronic. Okay, so, so far um, the story about the design, the overall construction of the product, uh, how it's uh, laid out to minimize interference, what kind of materials are used to make the product really heavy and solid, including uh, what I missed to mention is we have a double uh, button plate extra extra attached to the uh, main chassis to increase weight and give it a more solid foundation. So now we have uh, built the foundation for good amplifier. And I'm now going to tell you on the next slide what technologies we actually built into the product to really make it a sounding, uh, excellent sound and amplifier uh, fully following the Moran's DNA. So technologies. First of all, the engine of uh, an amplifier, so the heart of an amplifier, is the power supply because all the energy we need to drive our speakers carefully and controlled is uh, coming out of the power supply. And to give it a good start, we built in a toroidal transformer which has a nearly 13 centimeter diameter and a weight of three and a half kilograms. So it's a really heavy piece uh, we, we built in here. And this one is giving us all the current we need to drive the speaker. 
what you can see on the picture as well, there's a metal ring all around the toroidal transformer, which actually helps to reduce vibration uh, extra. So it's very solid foundation, vibration we don't want to have. That's also why we built this strong chassis construction, as I explained before. We want to keep the audio signal as clean as possible. The power supply actually is loading the main capacitors. The main capacitors are blo uh, called block capacitors. You can see on the left pictures, uh, the, the ones we utilize here are made by the company Elna and they are very well known for high quality audio parts and also here on the uh, main capacitor itself it is printed like that and uh, for audio and uh, these components are built in uh, together with Maran so we have a very close cooperation with the Elna company it's very close to our factory located actually in, in Japan in Chirakawa uh, they have their own factory just around the corner. So it's a very nice uh, cooperation we have with this company. These main capacitor actually, as said, are the main source of energy. So the toroidal transformer is loading the main capacitors. And if the power amplifier stage needs some, um, uh, yeah, the energy, the current actually to drive the speakers, it's pulling these energy out of the main capacitors. That's why the quality of main, uh, the main capacitors is so essential. And uh, what you can see at the bottom of the main capacitor, there's a little white area that's actually not uh, paint, but that's, uh, it's a glue. So we do glue these capacitors to the PCB board. Again, that's done to reduce vibration. Uh, on the right-hand side on the picture, you can see uh, the power regulation, regulators for the preamplifier section. Also here, it's key to a very clean power supply um, to have the cleanest audio processing in the preamp as well. And um, the copper um, shielding you can see, or the copper caps you can see on these power regulators are also attached to reduce vibration again. So it's all about getting as clean conditions as possible. That's why we put a lot of attention to have a very good uh, power supply and clean power supply, which can deliver high current very quickly. Talking about the preamplifier stage, uh, let me jump into that one right away. Uh, what you can see here is uh, the volume IC uh, we utilize, it's a Muse, and uh, it's an electrical volume IC. The benefit of these is actually that uh, the, the quality is very high. We have very low signal to noise uh, um, ratio or high signal to noise ratio. That uh, means a low noise, high signal level. And uh, we have very linear uh, volume control. Um, on the right hand side, the picture actually shows the full preamplifier with the volume IC installed on the top. We are surrounded by further capacitors, which are also uh, used to clean out the power supply for the uh, preamp stage. And in the below rectangle field, which I marked, which I also put a tag on, which says HDAM is the driver stage after the volume IC. And uh, the volume IC has a nice feature, uh, which we utilize to improve our signal to noise ratio by 7 dB and how we are doing that one I will show you on the next slide because actually what we do is um, in the IC itself we have per channel two uh, variable resistors potentiometers uh, the one on the top it's called uh, I, uh, I marked with volume level they're actually how we let's say attenuate the input signal because uh, the input signal always has maximum level and we have to reduce it not to overdrive the output stage. Um, and the lower um, potentiometer you can see is a total gain. So we play with these two actually to optimize always the input signal level and um, the gain factor of the following stage. That's the one uh, triangle one you can see, uh, which we use our H stands for. So by optimizing this ratio of volume level and total gain, we can optimize the signal to noise ratio and 
uh, has been able to improve by 7 dB, which is quite a lot. So it means better signal to noise ratio, less noise, more signal, more information, more details, better performance. Now we, are, we talked about HDM. Let me just recap here what HDM actually is. It's uh, our hyperdynamic amplifier module. It's a proprietary Marantz technology. It's a signal amplifier where in standard products or by competition, normal operation amplifiers are used, ICs, like you can see on the lower uh, a row on the left-hand side, that's an integrated circuit, which is actually, uh, yeah, yeah, let's say it's a closed circuit, which you can't touch. On the HDAMs, we have the possibility, as you can see, it's built by discrete parts. We have the possibility to touch any part here and to optimize this, uh, the components um, as we need for the best performance of our products. So we can utilize the HDAM to even fine tune the sound quality. And beside that, actually the HDAM is very fast and very low noise in comparison to uh, an integrated circuit. So a lot of benefits and we do utilize the HDAM in many ways in our products. And let me just take this one as an opportunity to explain to you the different versions we have. So you, you read HDAM, you read HDAM SA2 and HDAM SA3. So don't get confused here. SA3 doesn't mean it's uh, better than the SA2 or the, S, uh, the standard HDAM. It's just a type where we use, it's used in different application, let's say it this way. So all the different versions do have a different application uh, in the product itself. So on normal or let's say um, source components like a uh, CD player or a network player, we normally use HDM SA2 and HDM a lot, while on amplifier we use in addition also the HDM SA3. Let's have a look to the power amplifier stage. So we are coming with the signal from the pre-amplifier and feeding our power amplifier. The power amplifier actually the section which is driving your speakers. And uh, as mentioned before, we do need to have a good power supply, which is clean and which is capable of delivering high current very fast. And to be able to uh, deliver or handle the high current, actually, uh, we use the trick here on the Model 40N that we doubled the output stage transistors. So we are running uh, uh, in parallel a set of transistors, which gives us a possibility to run higher current. Higher current means better control over the, over the speaker, especially if you think about bigger size speakers with a heavy bass uh, uh, chassis, for example. This one normally has quite some dynamic. Yeah? So if you give it a push, it will move out, but it will also go back into the uh, starting position. And by that, uh, it will also create some uh, acoustics. We, with a high current, can nicely control how the uh, chassis moves back so that we will get a tight base and a very precise base in this respect. Let's look uh, how the power supply uh, or the power is supplied to the power transistors. Uh, on this image on the top, you can see in the background uh, the toroidal transformer mentioned before, and then the yellow marked uh, field, you can see the main capacitor, capacitors which get loaded by the toroidal transformer. And from there, it goes to the power transistors to the right and to the left amp. And uh, the amplified audio signal will then be passed on to the speaker terminals. This is the uh, orange marked arrows. And you can see the speaker terminals of Morantz here, uh, which are of high quality of copper for the best connectivity. So first of all, very short uh, supply lines. Uh, secondly, uh, we are talking about high current. That means we have to ensure that the impedance, the resistance on these lines is as low as possible, not to have any loss. And what we have done here to optimize the performance, I'm going to show you on this slide. So that's actually uh, how the PCB board looks into a, a design tool. We can see all the patterns or the tracks on the board itself. And normally, on the boards, you have a copper foil 
uh, glue to it to to carry on all the signal, be it the audio signal or the the supply voltages. For crucial parts uh, on the supply voltage, we replace these foil by uh, solid copper bars. As you can see uh, on the left, uh, on the lower picture on the left hand side, these are the solid copper bars, very strong, which of course have a very low impedance and can handle high current very easily without having any degradation in the supply voltage. So that's this done for the plus and minus. Again, it's all about uh, reducing the impedance, the resistance, and, get it, and getting the best uh, audio performance. So now where we have the preamplifier and also the power amplifier uh, uh, tackled, let's look uh, where we get our audio signal from, our input signal. And uh, first of all, it's of course the network and the digital connectivity we have. So um, taking off the lid of the shielded, shielded uh, cabinet, you will see one board. Um, the, yeah, let's say a bright area in the center. So the metal, metal shining area in the center, that's actually our HEOS module. Uh, which gives us the access to all the network content. And then you have also on this board the HDMI connectivity, the LAN connector, and the other digital inputs. So this is all nicely built into one uh, cabinet. On the second layer, as I mentioned before, uh, we have uh, the DA converter and the phono PCB board. Uh, let's focus first on the DA converter. That's what you can see here on the lower part of the uh, picture, uh, which is separated by another shielding bar towards the phono board. Um, the duck board is nicely designed very uh, symmetrically because uh, as mentioned, what we have in the design we also of the product, we also do of course in the electronic of the product because a perfect symmetry in the signal handling or for the left and right channel just guarantees a good sound stage and then accuracy in the overall performance. So you don't want to have any difference between the left and right uh, signal handling process. Uh, we do utilize for the as the DA converter the ES1916, a very well reputed DA converter, uh, which we nicely fitted together with our HDAMs again, because you can see uh, where the um, DA converter is located on the board and the stages after are all discrete built HDAMs just for filtering and uh, driving the next stage towards the preamplifier. So the next is uh, the digital filtering. As you know from our SACD 30N, uh, we do have a long history as well in uh, digital filtering and we always offer uh, the selection of different digital filters to our customers. While on the SACD 30N, uh, we utilize the DSP to do the digital filtering. This time, we utilize the ES DAC to offer these filter characteristics. So we have a filter one and a filter two, and the customer can actually select um, the, the different filters via the setup menu to fit it to the mu music he is playing and to fit it to his, his taste. So while the filter one is a more, more uh, accurate filter, uh, very pinpointing with a wide open sound stage. The filter 2 gives a bit more warmth, more analog characteristic to the source material. Then let's have a look to another very nice uh, part of the product, which is the phono stage. And as you can see here on the graphic as well, it's fully symmetrically built and uh, it supports uh, MM cartridges, and you have uh, also here integrated our HDM modules to make it a real Marantz musical phono EQ. And uh, again, it's uh, built to the highest standards with the best components uh, in the right uh, combination we selected to get you the Marantz performance from the, any phono or vinyl. So before we are going to the Q&A, we will close this with uh, a video which we created, a product overview video of the Morans Model 40N.
All right. The most musical sound simplified. I think that nicely sums it uh, all up. Um, I have Frederick now with me, and uh, we are ready to go through the questions. Yes, uh, Oliver, and thank you for having me. Um, I'll start off right off the bat with a question from Manoshi in the Philippines. I, you explained it a little bit already, but could you elaborate a little bit more about the amplifier section? How does it differ from the PM8006? 8006, okay. Yeah, as I said, it's a completely new, completely new construction because we are utilizing a different way um, we, we implemented the power transistors. Uh, on the 8006, for example, you would just find one pair of power transistors, while on the uh, Model 40N, we have uh, yeah, two pairs in parallel, which helps us to reduce the impedance and to run higher current. And also it's better for the heat dissipation. Now this gives us more power to control the speaker actually. And maybe just to add, uh, Directly to that one here is the Model 40N is capable of driving bookshelf speakers, but of course uh, also uh, easily uh, floor standing speakers, also of the bigger size. That's pretty clear. Okay, next question from Warren out of South Africa. What are the plans to get Tidal Masters to play high res into the Heos platform? And maybe I can tie also the other streaming network uh, providers like Cobus, how does that tie together? Yeah, right. Yeah, if you talk about Tidal, MQA and Cobus, uh, for us the easiest way to get it implemented will be to get the product room ready. And that's what uh, on the priority, priority list, uh, very much on the top and where we are working on. So I, I hope we can still get it within this year, um, but for sure it will come. That will be our way to get Tidal MQA and Cubus into the product. Okay, and Cash from Sweden also wanted to know a bit more about Rune. So you mentioned it's Rune tested, not Rune ready. So we're not using the USB, we're using the AirPlay protocol, right? That's correct, uh, Frederick, yeah. Okay, Peter would like to know if the Model 40 has direct buttons um, on, I don't see direct buttons on the chassis, but maybe on the remote for Heos favorites. Heos favorites, no. So the whole control will be done via the uh, app. So that's the most convenient way to, to access your music. And uh, that's also what we recommend to use. That's right. And the advantage of the Heos app is if there's any changes in service providers, we can still tweak the app and give you additional functionality at a later stage, right? Exactly. Now, while we're talking about the remote, uh, you mentioned it has two filters. Is it possible to use a remote? Uh, like on my remote, I have filter one filter or a filter button that swaps between the two. No, you have to enter the option or the, the setup menu to select filter one and filter two. Um, maybe talking about the um, setup menu, uh, which is on the product itself, we also have the possibility, of course, to, let's say, tweak it in the way the product we want to use it. Uh, for example, if we connect the LAN, which we always recommend for the best audio performance if you do streaming, then it's possible to deactivate Wi-Fi and also Bluetooth, because if you don't utilize the features, just switch it off because it only, yeah, can add negative to the audio than positive. So that's what we do. We always give options to deactivate features we don't use. Okay, and the questions are coming in from Dennis uh, Brunby. Uh, it seems like a very nice product. Thank you very much. We're really excited about that indeed. Any restreaming of analog or digital inputs? I know the scenario, you hook up a record player onto the phono inputs, you are actually able to rebroadcast it through the Heos network, right? It works, yeah. And I just tried also broadcasting to my ND8006, <clears throat> excuse me, and it nicely shows in the display of the ND8006 Modi 40N phono. So it's a pretty cool feature, yes, possible. Okay, Xing from Vietnam would wanted to know where is the unit manufactured and we're proudly saying it's made in Shirakawa, Japan. 
in our if you haven't had the occasion to see yes so we will definitely arrange something in uh in for dealers at some point when COVID uh, relaxes a bit so we can do more site visits of the factory there uh bahadir is asking be the difference between the pm806 is as between the amplifier section we actually uh mentioned that before uh it's still the same uh Amplifier topology, it's still class AB. So the difference between PMA and the Model 40N, it's class AB, whereas the Model 30 itself is class D. So That's correct. In terms, yeah. of, in terms of performance, what could you elaborate a little bit of what difference it makes between AB and D? Because I honestly heard the Model 40N, and it sounds as good as the class D Model 30 itself. Uh, it's actually even capable of driving nice speakers but it's a matter of taste for what type of amplification you prefer right uh i would disagree here so um we for a long time uh have been very reluctant to use class d technology into our products or uh, let's say especially in the premium products uh, because we always have been very pleased by the performance of a class a b amplification topology however with the um, with the years, Class D technology always improved. And so let me just clarify here, um, Class D doesn't mean digital. Class D is still an analog amplifier. It's just the way the signal gets amplified. And uh, the D was just the next letter in the alphabet. That's why it's cl called Class D. Um, so with the Class D technology, um, which improved and improved over the years and uh, once uh, the hypex solution came out with the direct feedback um, it was uh, the state of or the, the time where we said okay there's a potential in this class d technology we can actually utilize it now to bring it into our premium products so if you compare a marans product from the top class to the middle or even to the entry class, you will always find the Marans DNA in sound performance. So it's not a matter of taste if you go for a class AB or class D solution, because we take care that the sound characteristic is a Marans one. What you do get if you climb up in the uh, range of our products is you get a better performance always. You get more precision, you get more details, you get more air, you get more yeah, uh, sound stage. So that's what's always improved. And you get the capability if you go now to the Model 30, for example, in comparison to the Model 40, you get even more energy available because the Class D has a, just the power uh, uh, or the, the, the quality to give more power out of a given size. And uh, this gives you the opportunity to drive even much bigger speakers where maybe the model 40 will fall short you know but let me say okay. again the model 40 power stage is quite capable and you can also drive bigger size floor sending speakers with ease so speaking of driving speakers a uh, question from john here in australia uh, what's the perfect sparing strategy for marans of course we will suggest recommend our own brand i can see and we've done this in our Hong Kong showroom as well, the 702 and 705 um, series uh, signature. Any specific ones that you can recommend that pair very well? Look, um, you, you have the stuff in your shops. Uh, just play around and you will find the fitting uh, speaker and you will recognize actually it plays with a wide variety of speakers. So I wouldn't say there's a, a speaker which you can't use. Of course, as you mentioned, 702, like we have uh, placed over here, it's a very nice speaker, which also fits uh, price-wise nicely. But I also heard combination with uh, 805 uh, D4 uh, lately, and it also really gives you a very nice sound stage uh, of this combination. And um, we also can look into the Polk uh, speaker assortment, for example. If you go for the reserve, the R1 or uh, R100 or R200, the bookshelf speakers, I think that's also a very nice fit. Yeah, that's right. We had some nice syn synergy playing the R200 reserve series on this particular amplifier. A uh, very good question from Tim out of New Zealand. The HDMI input, is it purely for TVs or can you use uh, 
uh, I squared S uh, DSD style over PCM from a blue ray player or a music server? No, it's purely designed to connect your TV. That's also why we have HDMI ARC. So it's just the audio returns channel we do support. Uh, by this, we are able to minimize the, let's say, the action going on into the product. Uh, of course, you can also make it an HDMI input, but that will require additional uh, components, uh, additional ICs, which also, again, can generate some, let's say, distortion into the product. So we really kept it very simple. And uh, HDMI ARC is uh, sufficient. Uh, we don't need to have HDMI EARC because the EARC you actually only will need for Dolby Atmos contents, for example, which we're not transporting anyhow. So from your TV, you will get the two channel PCM signal, and that will be supported via the HDMI ARC input. Yeah, which brings us to the next question from Aaron. And I think we already mentioned that it's not possible to see the user interface like an AVR, it doesn't output a user guide or a GUI on the screen, right? That's correct. Yeah, actually, it's the same story. We don't want to have any video functionality in the product itself because actually it's not necessary. The simplicity of the product is that you don't have to do a big uh, setup uh, or yeah, a long, a lengthy setup. It's just uh, a kind of plug and play, get the LAN connected, get your speakers connected, and you're ready to go just utilizing the Heos app to, to uh, steer your music. Right, and then that brings us again to the next question about controlling for custom install. Shimon from um, Australia wanted to know if it's possible to control it with like IP uh, systems, controlling over IP since it has HEOS built in. Yeah, exactly, that's possible. Yeah. So with our common line interface and the HEOS protocol, you can control it in an installation as well. Any plans for Tidal streaming using Tidal Connect? Uh, it's on the list. Uh, can't tell you exactly when it will come, but it's on the in the pipeline. Okay, there was a question with regards to the illumination on the front panel. It's nicely warm white glow, it's a typical Marantz feel. There's no other option to change the color of the illumination? No, it's uh, fixed to the white, yellowish white, I would call it. Yeah, so there's no blue option. Right, I think we're quite through um now there's one more from shimon any news on apple music because apparently uh there's demand in certain regions to have apple music integration we're using airplay right yeah. now or bluetooth in worst case yeah exactly so that's um, airplay is uh, our way to apple music right now so there's no direct implementation plan Okay, Sergey wanted to know if the HDMI input supports PCM in high-res format, like 192 kilohertz. Yes, it does. Yeah, so if supported or let's say provided by the TV, uh, the TV as said is today uh, uh, a smart TV in, in most of the cases, and it's uh, a source of content. And if provided in high-res, it can also be uh, support or it will be supported by the Model 40N. So if it's not a TV, but for example, a laptop that has a sound card, would that still work? I can't tell you. It depends on what uh, yeah, format the sound card can provide to the Model well, 40N. If it uses the or utilizes the ARC channel, yes. But uh, I'm not familiar with the sound card if you can set these kind of transmission protocols. But I don't yeah. think so. A uh, good question uh, with regards to the Morant's musical filtering. Um, is that done inside or outside the ESS chip? That's done inside the ESS chip. Okay. Do you by any chance know the total weight of the amplifier? I think we need to look at the info sheet. I, I don't think know it's roughly the total 17 kilograms out of my 17 hand, I would kilograms. guess. So, uh, but I'm just having Roland, my colleague in the background, uh, typing in some numbers here and <laughs> looking for the information so I can give it later on. Uh, I think what we mi completely missed to mention is the price of the product, right? That's right, so which think, differs uh, from country to country. Yet. So the, the price uh, for this product is uh, two and a half thousand euro. And introduction to the market, so the first supplies will start end of February 
early March, depending on the regions. Exactly. And then the regions will also have their own import duty and their own currency conversion. So based on that, the price might vary quite uh, different from country to yeah. country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, oh yeah. Um, Mohabit is also asking if there's a new turntable in the same form factor that is planned for matching the model or N, model N series. Yeah, that, that the gun <laughs> How do we match the form factor for this uh, nice design of the Model 40 N? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we, of course, we are working on some some turntables in the background as well, but uh, nothing to talk about yet. Yes, I've seen the TT15 uh, match that our New York press event for the Model 40 N. It matches quite beautiful. So even the TT15, if it's still available, is a good match. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, if you look through the design of the TT15, it's very contemporary, so it's uh, timeless. Yeah. Okay, just quickly reiterating for Shimon, yes, there is a subwoofer output, and you can set it with filters. And I think we're right on time. It's on the hour, and we have finished yeah. all the questions. Then uh, let me just uh, add the information about the weight. It's 16.5 kilograms, so I haven't been too far. Awesome. Okay, I think uh, if every question has got answered, uh, we can close for today. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, your patience and the time spent to listen to the introduction of the new Model 40N. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Frederick, for your support here. And thank you, Roland. And all together, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.